I believe <coughs> you all are trying very sincerely to cultivate loving friendliness. That's a wonderful attempt. And still may you may some of you may find it difficult to practice loving friendly thoughts. We have to make a strong will, determination to cultivate these thoughts. Whether we are sitting, standing, walking, or lying down, as Buddha said, whenever we are awake, we must keep thinking of how to cultivate loving, friendly thoughts towards us as well as towards others. If you have difficulties in sharing friendly thoughts towards certain beings, find one reason or another to break through that barrier. When we make a determination and have a very strong will, anything is possible. It is us who make the commitment, not depending on anybody else, no matter how much obstacles we may find in our way, if we make a determination, we can overcome all the obstacles. There is no insurmountable obstacle for one who makes a determination. We make this determination for our own sake, not for the sake of somebody else. Because the practice of metta is a special conditioning of, of ourselves. We condition our mind to overcome negativity, negative states. Buddha said, one who lives with metta becomes very pleased with the Buddha's teaching because the Buddha's teaching itself is filled with the teaching of metta. The teaching came from a one who is an embodiment of metta and compassion. Advising us, Buddha said, if we have any respect, any honor, love for the Buddha, <coughs> We should practice metta towards all living beings. Buddha doesn't need our metta, but out of compassion he said, if you, if we love him, respect him, we must cultivate metta. That very statement is, comes from very loving, compassionate heart because he knows when we practice metta, we benefit from it. One who benefits from metta, benefits from dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha.
Metta is not something that Buddha himself invented or discovered, but it is an ancient law that he adapted, practiced, and taught us. He taught us the power of metta, He said to his uh, close, closest disciples who are monastics, who depend entirely on people's support, food, lodging, medicine, and clothes. And therefore, monastics are always indebted to their supporters. But he said, if a monastic practices a metta, even for a fraction of a second every day, that monastic becomes free from indebtedness to the people who support him. So this is a very powerful statement, how much metta can we practice in a fraction of a second. And yet its power is so great that it, that it can free us from our indebtedness to people who support us. So he valued metta so much praised it so highly. And one who practices metta gains concentration faster. Tuatang chittang samadhyati, he said, among other benefits. And that is what we want to gain. We want to cultivate metta in order to gain concentration faster. We practice metta now and forever for one and all, us and others, without any exception. If we find any difficulty in cultivating metta, then find a good reason, one more than one reason we can find to cultivate metta. This moment, let us cultivate metta. He said, when we cultivate metta, adhigache padang santang sankharupa samang sukhang, he said, one who practices metta attains the stage of state, the state of peace. By seeing, by overcoming, ceasing all sankharas. Sankhara Upasama Sukha. Happiness arising from cessation of Sankhara. All kind of conditions. No condition can interrupt that attainment of peace when we practice metta. It benefits us now, benefits in future. Metta benefits us here, it benefits us there. Wherever we go, whoever we associate with, whatever we do, 
metta becomes a power. You may have encountered situations where individuals express their arrogance, impoliteness, prejudice, and that those moments if you stay with metta, charge your mind and body with metta, that difficult moment can be overcome. And this moment we practice metta, not only for this moment, but many trillions of moments to come. for our own inner peace and peace of others. We respect the Buddha enormously by cultivating metta within ourselves. That is wonderful puja offering to the Buddha that is following his instructions which he delivered with metta. Just like benevolent parents always think of welfare and happiness of their loved children, Buddha always had enormous amount of metta towards us. With metta he attained enlightenment. With metta he taught the Dhamma. With metta he passed away. No moment in his life had he passed without metta. And we follow his instructions by trying to emulate his example. Meditation becomes even more beneficial when it is combined with metta. From the very beginning of our meditation, we must cultivate metta and charge our minds and bodies with these wonderful, beautiful, peaceful thoughts, thoughts that relaxes us, thoughts that heal our scar of resentment, there's nothing that we cannot achieve when we have metta. There is no age limit, time limit, gender limit, geographical limit, space limit for metta. Metta transcends all these boundaries and barriers and it can embrace all beings alike. When the mind is charged with metta, we feel our eyes are relaxed, our nose, ears, tongue, body, brain, everything is relaxed. We don't feel time passing. Aches and pains will not be a problem for one who is charged with metta. We shouldn't have any reservation 
any second thought when we want to cultivate metta. We full with full heart we plunged into the practice. Embrace it, accept it, follow it, and be with it all the time. Our meditation is meditation not for us, but for all. We develop these thoughts in us, not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of all. We want to share these thoughts with the rest of the world, with other beings all around us. The more we share metta, more metta we get. It will never diminish by sharing. It increases. More metta we, pra we practice, more we want to practice. Even in the practice there is no time limit. It never tires us out. It never makes us bored, 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 bored and tired. It will never become monotonous. Metta is always growing, always fresh, it never becomes stale, always new. And it brings a smile to our face, smile to our heart, smile to our brain. We feel relaxed, comfortable, happy and peaceful. <coughs> so find one reason or another to cultivate metta. Don't say that you cannot cultivate it for yourself, you can cultivate. You have the root of metta, the rudimentary power, seed of metta. Just relax and let it grow. Let it unfold itself and blossom itself in every moment we, in, we are in meditation or even out of meditation. And let these thoughts of metta be your strength. Let these thoughts of metta be your protection your guard and guide. Let this thought of metta bring you light, bring you peace, bring you happiness, bring you concentration, and may you all attain this wonderful attainment in this meditation. <coughs>